Thank you. Uh, while we're getting uh, switched over to a Mac here, um, everybody can uh, kind of relax and take a breath because there are no algorithms, no formulas, no models here. Um, I'm really here to kind of uh, talk about some big challenges um, for trying to study some big beasts and um, appealing to some of the kinds of things that you all do that might help us uh, solve some of those problems. So um, basically elephants are big, um, big beasts and uh, they range over huge areas and um, but they're mostly important here in the sense that they represent animals that um, for effective conservation, we're gonna have to go to huge scales for data collection in order to understand where they are and what they're doing. Um, the, uh, you know, some of the important things, these, this is uh, my, my focus. <laughs> I don't know what this is doing. Anyway, this is not working very well. Um, so uh, my focus is on forest elephants. It's a unique species that's found in Central African rainforests. Um, it's probably, it certainly is the most impacted species of elephant right now in terms of poaching, but also has the greatest probability of remaining in kind of a natural ecosystem. Um, and uh, I can't remember what else. Uh, it's gonna be, oh. You know, we're not hearing this sound, are we? Can you hear anything yeah, coming through? Yeah. Okay. Um. <laughs> we know almost nothing about this species. Um, the rainforest uh, really limits what <laughs> kinds of ways we can, uh, can investigate the animals. So this is uh, the Central Africa, um, and that's the equator running through Central Africa. The recent range of forest elephants included almost all of the dark green that you see in that map. Um, most of the uh, population to the east of the Congo River, which you see coming through the middle, has been pretty severely decimated in the last couple of decades because of poaching. So uh, right now, a lot of the concentration is primarily in the, the western part of that range. And um, this is a huge, huge area. So the question is, how do we collect data about elephants? Even in this eastern part uh, where they've been decimated, we don't know where the remnant populations are. We don't know where the critical resources are, um, pockets of refuge that elephants are using there that we need to protect. So this picture gives you a bit of an idea of sort of this current state of the art, huh? um, which is hanging from a tree and putting uh, recorders up. Basically, we're using acoustic methods because elephants, um, many animals communicate acoustically and so we can use acoustic recorders. I think other people have talked a bit about this already. Um, and elephants use low frequency vocalizations which travel very far through even dense habitats. So one of our recorders like this can, um, can sense us about two square kilometers of rainforest. We also use these to monitor poaching, gun hunting. Um, because of how loud gun uh, discharges are, we can monitor about 13, 13 square kilometers of uh, <coughs> forest with one unit. Um, so basically, we, the current thing, uh, we put these units up with batteries that run, have them run for three to six months. Data are all stored on SD cards in the machine. Um, can take uh, many days hiking into the forest to get to a site where we want to put these up. Then we've got to go back to get the data. So more days of walking. Um, and basically, this is not uh, going to scale up and isn't sustainable in kind of trying to, to work on really, really big scales. As an example of this, this is an area in northern Congo where we did a, a couple of years ago, I did a study to estimate the population size of forest elephants in an area that's about uh, 2,000 uh, square kilometers. Um, this area is called, uh, actually called the Green Abyss. It was in very, very difficult to get into. Um, 
and basically with uh, a team, I'm not sure whether you can even really see these dots because there's a bit too much light here. I was supposed to do that earlier so you could have seen it. Um, basically to get in here, we had to come by a dugout canoe down this river. We would be dropped off on the edge of the river if we could find a place to get out. And then we would walk through over here to the road to be picked up. It took us 43 days, me and my team, to deploy 23 units in this area. So it's extremely difficult. Um, and again, you know, I'm trying to kind of hit the point here that this is not it, this is not going to work if we're trying to cover uh, hundreds of thousands of square kilometers to figure out where these elephants are. Um, once we get the data, and I should have mentioned uh, that, so that 43 days um, putting out all those units, this was one of the worst habitats I've ever been in, um, a, a type of vegetation called Marantaceae, which is you basically have to chop through it to get uh, to where you go. And um, the team had to go back and get the data from all of those units. Sans moi. I did not want to go again. So I paid a guy and I said, you don't need me to, 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 to help you do it now. So then you've got all, all of these data, all of these recorded sound files, in which are calls of elephants or gunshots, whatever you're looking for. So this is um, an example of, of elephant calls, really, really nice ones. Um, pretty clean background. We need to find these in that sound data and it's, uh, they're very sparse in that sound data. So I've got my, my mind right now on about a 30,000 square kilometer area in Gabon where there are no roads, no cell towers, fortunately very few people. And um, we have no idea how important this area is for forest elephants or for other really uh, critically endangered species. So I'm kind of a lousy uh, animator, but this will give you a good idea of what I really wish we could, uh, we could manage to do. So basically kind of coming back to this, you know, huge area that we need to, to gather information from, um, to do something like what I just showed you, we need dirt cheap recorders, we need low power, um, and particularly we need some way to, to deal with getting data out of the forest. We're not gonna send sound files because they're so dense. Um, so basically the idea of using, you know, uh, satellite transmission of data means that we have to have incredibly good detectors on board that are gonna you know, pump through the data for us um, and then send just numbers. But that's where we have uh, some big challenges in terms of how do we get through these kinds of data with really, really good kinds of detectors uh, that could send us the information. Is it possible to actually do something like this? Um, and that's where you know, a lot of the things that all of you are talking about and thinking about might uh, be able to feed in and help us accomplish something like this um, and, and save uh, elephants and a lot of other species in these areas. Thank you. All right, we have time for one or two questions before, before the lightning talks. Yeah. So is there, a, is there, are there some areas that have a higher priority than others because is it possible that if it's hard for you to go there to even measure anything, that poachers might also find it hard to go there? So maybe areas where there's a more likelihood or more intensity of poaching might be prioritized more. That's, that's true to some degree, but basically we really know very little about where the most important areas are. Uh, the focus so far has been totally um, in the, you know, the protected areas, the national parks in Central Africa. And um, 
some of the forestry concessions surrounding those parts, simply because that's where effort has been put. But um, the bottom line is we know from ivory seizures and the genetic analysis of that ivory that a huge amount of this is coming out of several places in Central Africa. Um, and, but when you kind of get down on the ground, we're not seeing um, kind of the, the roots where the, this ivory is coming out. So it's hard to prioritize. And part of, part of the challenge for us is that a lot of the really good habitat in Central Africa is outside of protected areas. They're in designated uh, forestry concessions, which are maybe not being used, even being logged at the moment, but we don't know how important they are for species like forest elephants. So getting data so that at least we know this is a place we need to, to increase protection is one of the big problems. All right, let's thank our speaker. One more time.